This is our first clip here, we'll show you some activation and mobilization stuff that you can do before you go out in the field or before you start your training or your games. In that squat position, always ensure we're in this position at the inside of your shoes or outside your shoulders. Sit nice and low, and you're just going to pulse both knees out at the same time you're holding this position. Set yourself a time, say 15 to 20 seconds, and you're just doing as many reps as you can in that time frame. Hands around the ankles, same idea again, sit into your squat position, we're going to go into a reverse monster walk, so you're sitting low, and you step back, feet together, back, feet together, always ensure you've got that wide base, feet outside shoulders, and we're in this athletic position here. When we go back for a set amount of reps, we can start coming forward, then as well. So, once more, fingers inside toes, pull the hips to the floor. Bring the right hand, bring the left hand, slow and steady in your movements, both hands, and stand up. Stance, so think of your lunge position for your first few reps. Keep your knee on the floor, both hands are extended out, come up overhead, and back down the other side. So overhead, and down, what we're trying to get here, we have our split stance, your hips are stable, and you're separating that upper from lower body. When you find you're relatively controlled in the movement with that one, just raise that back knee off the floor, and it's the same premise here then again. So you just exercise we can look at, where we drop to the floor, and we can look at some shoulder health here. So where we have our floor slides, but when we come back out of our floor side, do internal rotation of the shoulder, external rotation, and back into that slide overhead as well. Just to get the body uh, loosened and warmed up before you start the main body of your session. So for carry coaching games, we're taking to the pulse razor of our warm up. Once again, we're utilizing that time to work on some technical stuff. We're going back to change of direction, agility based stuff. We're going to look at our crossover step, how you can progress it through, and then we have a quick look at deceleration mechanics as well. Deceleration is important when it comes to agility. The quicker you can stop, pull on the brakes, the quicker you can re-accelerate out of that turn then again. So think of that, the quicker I can stop, the quicker I can get to my destination. So be that when you're cutting and turning around the player or in any game-based scenario. First exercise here for your crossover step. Start in your athletic base position, that triple flexion of ankle, hip and knee. We're just going to do a crossover step to the side of the stick. So as you can see, always in my athletic base position, my head, my chest is facing forward the whole time, and there's a separation of upper and lower body. So it's just the lower body that moves as my upper body stays pointing in the same direction. So once we have that nail, the basics of that nail, start getting the feet moving on the spot. It's critical that you never plant your feet, particularly in Gaelic games, as you lose your momentum when you're straying. It's not easy for a player to get around you when you plant your feet from a defensive point of view. So, quickly on your toes, you step, stay on your toes, step, stay on your toes. You can progress that movement on by introducing a shuffle. Now, taking a defensive situation, player is running at you, if you use your crossover step to progress into your shuffle, to progress into your acceleration. So, just take it through that. So that was your crossover into the shuffle, and now we add a quick acceleration to the end of that. So that's just a quick bit of help for cutting and turning. You can use that in the 10 meter space to help you get your pulse up. From there then, we look at deceleration. So set a marker out, say 5 or 10 meters away. All you want to look to do is accelerate, stop, 
accelerate and stop. When I'm putting on the brakes, I'm sitting low and dropping my hips back behind my heels. So I'm lowering my sit for a mass. It helps me brakes on me. Once again, we're accelerating now. Stop as quick as we can by dropping our sit for a mass. We're going to just introduce the back pedal so we can transition into our turn and re accelerate again. So remember, a big QR deceleration, the quicker you stop, the quicker you can re-accelerate out here. So this week for Kerry Coaching Games, once again, we're progressing in our potentiation side to the plyometric side of things. We're taking off vertical, horizontal and lateral placement. As I've said before, the transfer of the absorption force is critical to athletic development. So first exercise you want to look at is your pole. We're going to complement that with a top jump as well. So we're progressing on. So just do a quick demo first and talk to you that. So as you can see there, the pole once again we're stiff through the body, the movement is in the ankles, for that top jump in, you aggressively whip the knees to the chest, you're landing softly on each one. So the three things you look for, stiff, stiff and steady, and land softly. So that's our pole go, that's our vertical uh, placement. Next we look at a variation of a bound, you want to work single leg, you're uh, transferring your hop from left to right, and you stick on the same leg for two, so it's like two right, one left, once so you just work with coordination, horizontal placement as well. So we're repeating off one side, you got to switch it over, come back off the other. Stay in that single leg, and stop, push the ground away from underneath you with each arm. The concept here once again, push the ground away from underneath you, land soft with your jump, and you work across both sides, left and right, with that explosive move. So when we land it's critical that you're absorbing the force coming out of that. Our last one that we look at is our lateral. We're going to start from double leg and we're landing on a single. So hands on hips, standing tall, get into that triple flex, utilizing the stretch short and cycle, and you're going to land softly on your single leg. So this week for Kerry Coaching again, we'll go, our strength workout is going to be a complex. So a complex is a group of exercises together, where we do them consecutively with minimum rest. Complexes are ideal when you have minimal equipment available to you. Kettlebell in this instance, you can use a barbell or a dumbbell. Putting five exercises together, a mixture of strength and power. So we're maintaining the gains that we've made in the previous blocks. Kettle complexes are also a good conditioning tool as they raise the heart rate in minimal amount of time it takes to do. So the five exercises that we're going to do, starting with your squat press, so sit and press, get full extension of the elbows overhead, head up, chest out, hip breaks the knees with our squat, and then we're going to go into a kettlebell swing. So that's a hip hinge movement. You should feel that through your hamstrings and glutes. Keep your chest out as you swing. From your swing, 
you're going to transition transition to a one arm row. Split your stance. Keep your back flat. Pull your elbow tight to your ribs. You're going to work off both sides with this guy. Left and right side. From there then, we're just going to progress into a kettlebell snatch or variation of one. Head up, chest out and bottom. Pull high and press the elbow, press the kettlebell overhead. Finish all that out. Once again, RDL, upright row. Kettlebell touch the floor, pull the bell to jaw level. So all the movement through here, through hips, and pull high with the shoulders. So that's a quick kettlebell complex. You can use any exercises in a complex. It's just group them together. As you can see I picked up the kettlebell, and I didn't let it down until I finished the complex at the end. So pick a weight that challenges you through all five exercises. Okay, for carry coaching games, once again this week going to bring you a core circle around the core that you can do at the end of your session. We're looking at four exercises, 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off, we're going for two rounds. First exercise is your plank pulls. So you get into that low plank position, elbow directly underneath shoulder, straight line from shoulders to the heels. You're just going to walk back past the crease of the elbow and forward. You're doing that slow and steady for the 30 seconds. So that's your plank pull. Second exercise in, you're looking at your Copenhagen side plank as well. So get an object, get an object that you can rest your leg on. Come into your side plank position here, elbows on the shoulder, straight alignment from heel through the shoulders, and you're up and you're holding that for 30 seconds. If you find that's overloading the groin too much, just drop your knee to the floor, take the resistance out slightly, and then raise it up again. So starting out, you might do three blocks of 10 seconds. If you have the strength to hold it in there, hold for 30, but it's advice to do three blocks of this exercise then is a dead bug. So 90 knee, 90 hip, toes point to ceiling, fingers point to ceiling, brace the tummy like someone's gonna punch you in the stomach, you lock everything in, and you just extend right, left leg together, bring it back in and then work off the opposite. So it's critical here to be conscious of your body and movement, that you're working opposite limbs simultaneously together, that your fingers and toes are always pointed toward the ceiling with that tummy brace. Last exercise then, progressing our glute bridge through the continuum, we're gonna look at a long lever, and we have what we call perturbations. So these long levers are isometric rollings for the hamstring. So you have your long angle at your knee, raising your hips off the floor. If that's relatively comfortable in that single leg position, you just add a leg swing in. So it's adding a perturbation to the hamstring, putting a bit of strain through it. You just go for 10 seconds doing your kick, and then swap over, and you do the same off the other side, getting your 10 seconds in as well. So that's just a short little four circuit that you can do at the end of your session.